Dumb one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Senior Awards Ceremony for the Class of 2021. We're very excited to have you here with us in person this morning. We'd like to begin this ceremony with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just as a reminder, masks must be worn at all times while on school property. We are still under jurisdiction. The masks must be worn, so please make sure your masks are on. And I also ask that you find a seat on the bleachers that is numbered to ensure six feet distancing between you and another family. I have the honor of presenting our first awards this morning. The senior awards team met for many weeks early in the morning to reflect upon and think about the seniors in the class of 2021. There are some heated discussions and debate. There are also some very easy choices. The students you see before you have been selected to be honored by this faculty recognition committee. So with that, I'd like to start with our first award, the Jack Miller Memorial Scholarship. This award is for a college-bound senior who is hardworking, school-spirited, and an unselfish student athlete. It's dedicated to Jack Miller, who embodied both academic and athletic excellence, all wrapped up in a big and open heart. This year's recipient embodies every single one of those characteristics. It's my pleasure to give the Jack Miller Memorial Scholarship to Benjamin Bruno. Second award is the Marine Captain Michael J. Oler Award. This award is dedicated to Michael Oler, who is a Cold Spring Harbor graduate from the class of 1973, who perished in Beirut as a Marine in 1983. Michael was known for his strength of character, courage, loyalty, patriotism, perseverance, quiet leadership, and team spirit. These same characteristics are seen in our recipient this year, who embodies 
that quiet leadership and team spirit. It is my great pleasure to give them my Captain Michael J. Oler Award to David Brown. At this point, I'd like to introduce Ms. Christine Oswald. Good morning. Hawk Talk has been a tradition at Cold Spring Harbor for more than a decade. It's been a staple and a memory that students don't forget. Everyone has their favorite episode and its success relies on our morning news team. As you can imagine, it is certainly not an easy task to write, produce, edit, film, and speak for a morning broadcast. Members with presence become Cold Spring Harbor's beloved team. This award goes to Liam Golden for his many years of dedication both on and off screen in the area of news and broadcasting. The Seal Dare Yearbook Award recognizes a student who has worked nonstop this year to put together a living document of the final days of the class of 2021. She has been an incredible liaison in communicating with the student body and from day one of a very different year. She has genuinely wanted the best possible yearbook for her class. She has helped to add many new journalistic approaches to this year's edition, and I am proud to have worked along with her to complete this story. I am honored to present this award to Isabella Vallone. honors the commitment and artistic development of a young artist in the class of 2021. Her medium of choice has been centered around materials like markers, pencils, and paint, but she has transformed these materials to new heights by allowing her artistic vision and inner voice rise from deep within. She is an inspiration to her peers and her hard work, perseverance, and dedication has helped her learn more about herself this year than ever before. Our department is so proud of her work. As she leaves Cold Spring Harbor, she will carry with her the inward and outward powers that art brings to this world. The art department wishes to present Isabel D. Simone with the special art award. I'd like to present the Art Department Award to two people with incredible dedication to the arts. They each possess a true gift for creativity, conceptual thinking, and each strive for excellence in each and everything they do. Their understanding of meaning and the power behind a work of art is commendable. These two women have been on quite a creative journey this year, and I'm so proud to have been part of their journey. We wish them a lifetime of continued excellence as they embark on this journey. This award is presented to Maggie Bugos and Martina Simone. The Arts Booster Club Scholarship Award uh, recognizes 10 scholars who have participated and excelled in a range of artistic endeavors, including theater, music, art, and creative writing. These students have demonstrated passion and commitment to the arts throughout their high school years. 
It is my pleasure to present the Arts Booster Scholarship Award to Matthew Wright. Isabella Valone, Matthew LaCapra, Jessica McCrory, Victoria Rowley. Matthew Ross, Augustine Mayorino, Julianne Massa. Good morning, everyone. Uh, about this time last year, this looked very different. Uh, we were, many of us were driving to everybody's house to hand deliver awards, so it's nice to be outside uh, in an open forum today. The first award I'll be giving out is the Jupiter Hammond Scholarship Award, given by the English Honor so uh, Historical Society. This year it goes to a fine young man who's always inquisitive in class, he's a great teammate, uh, and maybe most importantly, he's so well liked by all of his classmates and all of his teachers alike. So this year the award goes to Duncan Lonoff. The next award is the Triple C Award for Character, Courage, and Commitment to Improve Society. It's awarded to two students who deeply care about their community and the social environment in which they live. I've had the pleasure of having both of these students this year and I can personally attest to how big their hearts are and how much they truly do care about both their surrounding community and school community alike. So please congratulate Isabel B. Simone and Nicholas Christian. The Sons of the American Revolution Medal is awarded to a student who has shown excellence in the discipline of American history. But to be clear, this young man's excellence extends well beyond American history. He's an incredibly well-rounded student, uh, he, he has got tremendous personality, and he as well is a very, very caring individual. And it's my pleasure to give this medal to Arno Lamy.
The Presidential Scholar Award is granted to the student who is regarded as the top social studies student throughout their high school career. This is a very difficult award to give for the social studies department. Um, like the Senior Awards Committee, there was much deliberation on, on the subject because, to be quite honest, we have so many top students and it's a very difficult decision to narrow it down to just one student. But in the end, I would like to congratulate Carly Genzer. The New York State Comptroller Achievement Award is awarded to a young man or woman who has shown academic excellence and potential for leadership through involvement in activities that improve the community. I know this individual has shown leadership not only in the school building, but also on the athletic field as well. So please congratulate Sierra Rosado. The Daughters of the American Revolution Good Citizenship Medal is awarded to the boy or girl for honor service to school and community, courage, and leadership. I've had the pleasure of starting my days every day this year with this young woman, and it's been a pleasure all year long, so I'm proud to congratulate Katie Delphi. The next award is the County Executive Public Service Award. The student that's receiving this award this year has taken leadership roles in clubs she's participated in. She's respected by her peers and teammates alike, and has been heavily involved in service at the school, such as community book drives, and one of my favorite charities, the Salvation Army Angels, uh, which, if you don't know what the the drive is for, it's through the holiday season. Um, they raise, uh, they donate clothing and toys for underprivileged children so they have something for the holidays. Uh, so it's, I'm proud to congratulate Julia Sobel. The Congressman Tom Swazi Certificate of Merit Award goes to a boy or girl who has a strong record of service to the school and community and maintains an above average academic standing. However, the words above average does not do justice to the student. This student has been an outstanding student all year long and if possible, might even be a better person. So, I'm proud to congratulate Isabel Weiss. The American Legion Post Number 360 Medal Award goes to a senior boy and girl who are outstanding 
school and community citizens. I was lucky enough to have both recipients this year and have truly, and they've been, truly been assets in the classroom all year long to their class, their school, as well as their community. So please congratulate Benjamin Kiley and Sarah Goldman. I'd like to welcome Mr. Christopher Homer out before the next order. It is such a treat. This is truly one of my favorite days of the year to recognize so many amazing students who have made it through anywhere from six to or zero to six years, one to six years, you know what I'm saying. Thank you for being here, the junior high, the high school, some of you who transferred in. Uh, I do love this day. It has been quite a year. I have been teaching 35 years. Really? You don't look that old? Um, <laughs> can't tell with the mask who says these things, but that's very good. Thank you. Um, this really has been a, an amazing year in the sense that the resiliency shown is off the charts, and I am impressed by all of you being here, doing what you needed to do to get through, and uh, even up your game, so congratulations. Uh, I am so glad this year we are here to celebrate, as opposed to last year where we were online. It means so much. Um, I also want to uh, call attention to all the students who are not here, who uh, unfortunately, there aren't enough awards, but they are part of our puzzle, they are part of our school, they are part of our team, and every student who does not get an award, uh, I give them a tribute to because they are important to us, and I think about them. So, so. And please know that I wish I could present awards to everybody, but I I'm given a list and I am told to behave myself, so that's how it goes. Uh, my Breakfast Club people, I will miss you five years of celebrating the mornings with you, and uh, I don't know what I'll do next year. So we're going to start with the first award finally. Uh, and I, what I do is I announce the first award and then I call the recipient's name, but don't come up, just know that you should focus, your family should focus, the rest of you could daydream for a little bit. So the first award is the Roberta Natupski Award, and uh, that goes to Erin Gallagher this year. And just to let you know, Roberta was a guidance counselor here at the school who had such a reputation. She had a respect for so many people. She had such a caring nature and would go out of her way to make sure people were okay. She also was somebody who gave of herself unselfishly. Aaron is one of those people who is just a, a wholehearted, wonderful person who gives of herself, who tries to make sure people are okay. I, I lost track, but I believe Erin is the 17th out of 18 children in the Gallagher family. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but she is not lost in that amazing mix of kids. She truly is an all-star. I had her in class, and I wasn't sure what to expect and what a leader she was. Uh, Aaron, I thank you for your morals, your values, and your commitment to others. So, Aaron Gallagher. Uh, the, the second award I'm giving is the Charles M. Wetterer Award for Service. And this is uh, an easy answer. This, is, this goes to Izzy Edelhardt. Uh, Izzy is a young person I first met through my community Save the Children group. Uh, she came from a private school here and her teacher, Madame Tawaji, uh, raved about her. And I said, well, I'll decide whether she's that bon, which is French for good because that's what Madame Tawaji says. Uh, she was right. Izzy 
ended up transferring to Cold Spring Harbor, and I went to check on her because I really enjoyed having her in the Save the Children Club. And I said, I got to make sure she's doing okay. She's new to the school. Is she fitting in? Is she doing okay? Well, she adapted to our school right away. She made a great crew, which is like cool talk for friends. She had her posse all the time. Uh, she was somebody who continued to volunteer. She was still involved in so many activities to help those in need. Uh, we did food drives together at supermarkets. She volunteered at early childhood, uh, volunteer classes that we would run, uh, and many other activities. I'm very proud of Izzy and her kind heart and caring actions. Izzy Abel. next award is the Dr. Raymond A. Walters Community Recognition Award, and this year that goes to Mackenzie Brogan. Uh, Dr. Walters is the reason I am here. He hired me 73 years ago. Uh, this award is for a student who has a concern for our school and who makes healthy decisions. Uh, I added a complete, I added this to the award, just a complete quest and thirst for knowledge. Uh, I remember meeting what I call Mac and Cheese instead of Mackenzie. Mac and Cheese back in junior high. I didn't have her as a student and she popped in my room just out of the blue with a huge medical text, like an anatomy text, and it had all these different surgery cases. I have no idea what it was. She came in and I think she wanted me to look over her doctoral thesis in the eighth grade. So uh, we just started chatting and she was going through the anatomy book telling me about know, all of the different surgeries and technical names for the body parts. And it was, it was unbelievable. So I had taught college for uh, 18 years at this point and I just sat there. I had no idea what she was talking about. She was just at such a different level. So I tried to impress her by doing the interlocking finger trick from behind the head and then releasing it, which is something I, I break out only for those to impress. And uh, I just sat there so humbled by just her total interest in learning. It was amazing. Her questions in class, and she took my, my health class and she took my elective, they caused me to be a better teacher. There were questions she said, and I said, you know what? I never even thought of it that way. Because I'm going to make the call. I'll get back to you. But thank you for asking that. Her work was used to show as examples to others. Again, her work rivaled any college paper I ever received. Uh, most of her assignments I, I received, I would just hope that I could get another one like that from uh, any time left in my teaching career. Anyway. Mackenzie, thanks for making positive choices and striving for excellence. Congratulations. <laughs> the next award is the Martin Davis Humanitarian Award, and that goes to Tori Rowley. Uh, this award goes to a student who demonstrates the spirit, compassion, and reaching out to help others. Uh, Tori is absolutely amazing. She is not only a, a fantastic student, but one of the best club members I've had in all of my years of teaching. She is beyond responsible. She pops in every week to see if there's anything we need to do for the next club meeting. It's unrivaled by anybody else. Uh, she has been an officer in my club since she was a seventh grader, which is usually unheard of, and she's been in the clubs for six years. Uh, she's a true leader when we go down to the elementary schools to teach peer education about good decisions. I count on her leadership. I put kids in the group that I know she could bring out and, and you know, help lead them to show them how to do it. Um, the award goes to her also because she truly cares about others. She goes out of her way to make sure that others know that they are visible and not invisible. She will reach out to kids who need somebody to reach out to them, and she uh, 
does many acts of kindness. She truly instills my faith in humanity. Tori, congratulations. Down to my final 23 awards. Uh, next award is the Judy Papora Memorial Scholarship. And this goes to two students. Uh, one is Shane, pronounced Shania McAteer, and uh, Billy Nichols. Um, Judy was a former board member here. She was also somebody who put students first at all times. She was always involved with the students. Uh, she had a lot of energy to her and she really cared about our community. We miss her presence. Uh, this award represents a good school citizen and somebody who's involved. Shania or Shane was certain to add fun to every single class that we had. I could always count on him for a certain je ne sais quoi. You figure it out, I have no idea what it means. Uh, he would always add a spice and laughter. He would always add an answer when I needed an answer. Uh, Shane, thanks for really caring about our class and thank you for making each class you're in the best it could be. Shane. And the other recipient, Billy. Uh, Billy had such a rare treat this year. He ended up taking health education as a senior. Most kids take it as sophomores. Um, he just got a Rise Up Award the other day. This is a good week for you, Billy. It really is. Um, and he heard Mr. Homer rave about him yesterday in health class because I paid a tribute to him that he truly deserved. When a senior takes health and they're amongst many 10th graders, often they'll just sit there silently or you know think of other things. Billy is one of our most valuable seniors we've ever had in health class. He is a leader. He is present in class. He does not skip out. He does not ask to go do something else. He is there every single day. He is a true leader in my class, and the kids really get a kick out of him and learn from him. He adds wisdom, patience, assistance, and he's got a great wit to him. It would be so easy for him to try to be invisible, but what I respect most about him is he is so present. Uh, he is a part of each conversation, and he is a gift to those sophomores who have taken that class. Billy, much respect. <laughs> the next award is the Sasbo Scholarship Award, and that goes to Colin Schaefer. This is an award that recognizes someone who has truly grown over the years. Now, I realize I'm a health educator and some of you may think it's the greatest growth spurt, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about human growth. Colin is someone who has truly grown as a person. I remember the difference between our seventh grade conversations and our senior year conversations. I truly enjoy our chats about his excellent taste in music, his t-shirt collection, and life in general. The most impressive thing that I've seen is Colin takes such a nice leadership role in the charity of Smile Train that his family is very involved in. It is such a great charity. Watching him help out at the different events, especially the Islander uh, game, I guess a year and a half ago or so, was so impressive. And I really am, you know, very impressed by all that you do for that and, and who you are. Uh, I wish you congratulations and keep up the good work, Tom. And the last award I'm giving is the Focus Community Service Award. Uh, I'm going to say a word and we'll see if you know who it is. Morty. 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 You know who Morty is? No. Okay, great. 
This year's winner is Mr. Matt Wright. What a treat it is to have him in class and in the Natural Helpers Club. He goes way above and beyond to make everyone's experience a real treat. He's the ringmaster in most classes and clubs and everything else he's involved in. He takes charge and literally adds electricity to every activity. I could always count on him to be the first to volunteer to help out or the first to give input. He and his family show true leadership with all the charity work they do. The Helping Hands mission is a big part of our community and their lives. It's truly heartwarming to see how they put others first. When people see, say, I hope you meet Mr. Wright, I have met Mr. Wright. I've met a few Mr. Wrights. He lives up to all that they talk about. I will miss your presence very much, Marty. I'd like to ask uh, Brian Schiffmacher to present the next one. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to hand out a few awards today. The first set of awards that I'm handing out today are the Cold Spring Harbor High School Faculty Recognition Awards. The following recipients have demonstrated an outstanding presence in the classroom. The faculty have chosen these students to honor their achievements here at Cold Spring Harbor. These students demonstrate day in and day out their dedication to Cold Spring Harbor, and the faculty would like to recognize them. The first recipient of the Cold Spring Harbor Faculty Recognition Award, Julian Sandler. Julian Sandler. Hudson Derisi. Jimmy Mao. Blake Molinari. Austin Flink. <laughs> Hannah Gummersell. Alexa Moore. Ellie Amoruso. Faculty Recognition Award, Chloe Tyree. That was my mistake. Sky is actually the last. Sky Shiner. The next award that I'm honored to give is the Cold Spring Harbor Teachers Association Scholarship. The Cold Spring Harbor Teachers Association asked the graduating senior to write an essay that outlines how they have made a difference in the classroom. What impact have they given? How have they made the classroom experience better? This year, many students turned in an essay. Erin Gallagher was chosen among these candidates 
as having made a substantial impact in the classroom. And the Teachers Association would like to recognize this with our scholarship. Aaron, please come and get your award. I would like to introduce Aaron Goldthwait to give out our next set of awards. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to jump down to award number 30 just for now, just so you guys are keeping track. Um, and what, the first two awards I'll be giving is for the Septo Peer Mentor Award. Um, it can be difficult for students to find time in their busy schedules to dedicate their talents and kindness towards students who struggle socially. This year, we're very fortunate to have two students that have not only shared their gift of service to others, but have exceeded our expectations of what it means to be a peer mentor. Jessica McCrory has been volunteering this, student, this year, working with a student as a lunch buddy. While this is usually a short-term, once-a-week commitment, this was not true for Jessica. Instead, she relinquished her own lunch period every single day, this entire school year, to mentor another student. Jessica's kindness, patience, and client demeanor was an asset to her mentee making her mentee's lunch a positive experience. Whether playing a game or just talking about their day, the friendship that grew was admirable. Jessica, students like you is what makes Cold Spring Harbor such a special place. Your kindness did not go unnoticed, so please come up and accept this award on behalf of the Our second recipient for the Septo Peer Mentor Award is Victoria Rowley. This year, Tori offered to share her pre period supporting a young lady during her vocational training period. What Tori brought to this relationship is not something that can be taught. She became an amazing hangout friend who helped her mentee perform tasks around the building. What started as a mentoring position soon became so much more. Tori read with the student, took walks, and would talk about interests of, uh, topics of interest for this student. Tori was not only a friend, but a role model who her mentee will fondly remember. I thank you for your kindness and your inclusive nature that you have brought to this experience. Please come up and accept the Peer Mentor Award on behalf of your mentee. The next awards I'll be presenting are the SEPTO Student Achievement Award. This award highlights students that have overcome difficulties in their learning and school experience. The first recipient for this award is Thomas Degnan. When you ask Tommy's teachers about the type of student that he is, you will hear the same words spoken over and over again. Kind, friendly, hardworking, and applied support. Tommy's a student who has grit, never giving up, and always willing to put in that extra work that's needed to be successful in his classes. He does all of this without one complaint. Tommy is described as being one of the friendliest students in our building. He will always make a point to say hello and stop to support a peer who might be having a bad day. He does this all quietly without any expectations behind it. Tommy takes pride in not only his abilities in school, but on the outside. When he's determined to figure something out, he will watch videos and teach himself how to do things, maybe like wiring his entire house or rebuilding a boat. Tommy, you deserve the recognition of this award for your hard work and dedication. Please come up and accept this award on behalf of all the teachers who have walked alongside you. The second recipient for the SEPTO Student Achievement Award is Logan Crockman. When thinking about student growth, Logan has made it in leaps and bounds. While things might not have always come easy, Logan has become a student who is open to reaching out for support and utilizing it consistently so he can be the best version of Logan that he can be. He's grown in his self-reflection and empathy toward others. He's also appreciative of the support network he has here. Logan is a true lover of information, especially in the areas of history and sports. He has come into his own as a learner, and I know he's going to take the lessons that he's learned here in Cold Spring Harbor to his next chapter in life. Logan, your support team is going to miss you, your sense of humor, and your expansive knowledge, especially when it comes to quizzing us on Mozart and history. Logan, please come up and accept this award. And now 
would want to introduce Miss April Henry for Award 26. <coughs> or not. Uh, <laughs> All right, Mr. Bowen. Dr. Bowen. I'll take it. Thank you, Ms. Will Sweet. I appreciate it. Uh, our next group of awards, um, the first two come from the Lloyd Harbor School PTG group. Uh, they're awarded to one female and one male who are graduates from Lloyd Harbor Elementary School, who best exemplify the Lloyd Harbor School philosophy, a citizenship award to a well-rounded individual. Our two scholarships go to Elizabeth Bentley and John Ray Martin. Our second group of awards comes from the Cold Spring Harbor Junior Senior High School PTG group. These awards go to two males and two females in the graduating class who have been a student at the high school since 10th grade and have exhibited good citizenship and have demonstrated significant academic endeavors. Our first two go to Elizabeth Bentley and Catherine Romanoff. Striking out today. Our second two go to Paul Bianco and Noah Porcelain. The next group of awards are the William B. Nichols Scholarships. These are presented to seniors who have graduated from Westside Elementary School and have achieved outstanding records in the following fields. In art, Annabelle Beter. <clears throat> Is my microphone on? I can't listen to this. In English and in French, Sarah Lynn. In health and math, Sierra Rosado. In music, Carly Genser. Outstanding service, Katie Belfi. In science and in Spanish, Aaron Gallagher. And in my favorite subject of social studies, Matthew Wright. This time I'd like to ask Ms. Blackburn to come to the microphone to give the School Spirit Award. This next award is going to go to two young ladies who have demonstrated outstanding school spirit throughout their years here, being active members of the Student Booster Club, helping to plan pep rallies, school spirit weeks, and having tremendous Seahawk pride. I'm proud to announce the recipients, Victoria Rowley and Jessica McCrory.
Good morning, parents, and good morning, seniors. Um, I'm here to present the Outstanding Computer Science Award. Uh, computer science is a specialty that requires passion, dedication, but most importantly, patience. The recipients of this year's award possess all of those traits. I have had the pleasure and honor of teaching these two students for the last three years, but have truly come to appreciate their talents this year as teaching assistants in my advanced computer science class. They are invaluable to not only me, but to every student that crosses their path. It is with great pleasure that I present the Outstanding Computer Science Award to Paul Bianco and Vlad Tarashansky. And it's my pleasure to introduce Senora Segura to present our next award. Okay, I'm here alone, but I'm not alone. Um, I'm missing my sidekick, Mrs. Uh, G, is supposed to be with me, Mrs. Meyer Giorgio, but she's teaching right now. I'm going to present the National Honor Society Award. For whatever we are, whatever we're doing, this student volunteers and she gives a helping hand to everything. She's known by all of you by Tori, but for me, she's Vicky. V for victory, Q, U, I. And that's in Spanish when she walked into my ninth grade class. She is the ultimate representative of the National Honor Society. For us, for Mrs. G and I, she's the ultimate representative Honor Society. She represents the four pillars: leadership, service, and character. My Vicky, your Tori, Victoria Rowley. freshman year, quietly, just walking around, I don't know, senora, yes, I can get this class to do things, I, yes, senora, I promise they will do it, and his commitment was there every single year, for everything we ask, everything Mrs. G will text, Mrs. we will say, we need this done, that done, he will show up every single minute for everything. Mr. Matt Ross. available with a willingness for her service award. As we heard from Mrs. Whitley, Whitley, uh, Godley about her tutoring, her community service has been impeccable to the school. Her innate sense of giving without expecting anything in return has beyond our expectation and we hope that it remains as part of her being. Victoria, again, for your service. <laughs> student Government Award. These four students, these wonderful students have served student government since their freshman year. And as our executive board of student government this year, even though we have been navigating a, a very difficult and trying year, and half of the year we were able to organize 
a high high food drive, a call a clothing donation for the homeless, uh, a fundraiser. We were able to put together every single meeting up like I call it, up in the air and down in the classroom, these four students were able to come in, in and out, and follow us, and even on those late nights when we said, oh, we need an executive meeting, either in the morning or at 8 o'clock at night, these four students show up and do the work. Please, Anna Spear, Matt Ross, Annabelle Reader, and Sofia Kederia. Creative Writing Award. It goes to a young woman I met when she was in ninth grade in my creative writing class. I also had the pleasure to teach her in 10th grade honors and again this year in AP. Ever since I met her, she has impressed me. Her insight is incredible and her writing, both formal and creative, is exquisite. And I was so impressed with her that I asked her to be an editor of the literary magazine uh, her junior year. I saw her creative writing blossom in 10th grade and 11th grade, and her attention to detail and imagery, her sensitivity, and her care with words is breathtaking. I'd like to share one of her poems now. Stained with ink. It starts as a whisper, a slight breeze in a forest of cells and synapses. It echoes, sound waves dancing on their tiptoes, whistling softly through a vast chamber. The call goes unanswered, for now. It begins to take shape. I see it in the clouds, loping along, almost indiscernible, but unmistakably there. I see it in the rising sun, spots in my eyes, can't know for sure, wait for my vision to clear. Now it wants to be known. It grows into a shout, stretches into a giant, bones setting, limbs arranging. The whisper becomes a chorus, incessant yet melodic, beautiful. It won't be ignored, tearing through to my very core, hacking at loose brambles, following the light, until, until my one thought, carved boldly into the walls of the chamber, stained with ink for good measure, becomes, I need to write this down. It is a true privilege to read Julianne Moss's words and an honor to present her with this year's Creative Writing Award. is a Literary Magazine Award. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, the name of our high school literary magazine and art magazine is Brock, which means to understand thoroughly because of being able to share in another's feelings. This year, the Brock Award goes to one of our editors. Yes, you guessed it, Julianne Massa. <laughs> Julianne's love for writing and dedication to Brock over the past four years has been instrumental in maintaining Brock's superior status as a high school literary magazine. And um, again, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to provide her this award. I think the printer ran out of paper. I don't have my next page. Sorry. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and by the way, Grok Night is tomorrow night on Zoom. A little shameless plug there. <laughs> the James Pryle Award Scholarship <coughs> goes to young woman or man who displays the character traits of integrity and empathy, as well as a desire to continually refine his or her writing skills. The faculty recalls Jim Pryle fondly for many reasons, including his kindness and genuine concern for his colleagues and students, his dedication to his profession, his upstanding character, one of unwavering integrity, his love for a good laugh, and his ability to make each of us feel that we were making an important difference in our world. Jim was a man who was near and dear to our hearts, and his passing was a great loss to those who knew him. And so when the members of the English department discuss who should receive this award, we think long and hard. The recipient must be a very special person. This year's scholarship goes to a young woman who has demonstrated both integrity and empathy. She gives up her time to help others. She's a conscientious student. She's attentive. She's engaged. She's unassuming. I'm honored to present the James Pryor Memorial Scholarship to Victoria Rowley. Jim, Pry Jim Pryor Award is usually presented by Miss Serino and me together. Miss Serino can't be here. She's at the elementary school. But, so I will be presenting it alone. Our award goes to a young woman who has been involved in the Harborview for several years. She was so involved, in fact, and such a reliable source of good stories in her early days as a writer for the club that we asked her to be our editor. She has written important articles about serious topics such as Black Lives Matter, the riot at the Capitol, and Libyan immigrants. Her excellent piece entitled The Pandemic of Climate Change was also the cover of the uh, cover article of our January 2020 issue. We hope that she continues her journalistic writing in college and wish her the best of luck. Congratulations to Amal Siddiqui. This year's Westside School Theater Association Award goes to someone who has been an active member of every facet of the performing arts at Cold Spring Harbor. She has been in every musical since her days at Westside School, was selected to be in the All-State Chorus this year, is in the high school chamber singer, plays in the school orchestra. She has worked backstage for productions at every level and is an accomplished dancer. She is always willing to mentor a younger student in class or outside of class and stands up for her peers and causes she believes in. A talented soprano who likes to claim she can also sing the lowest bass line. She will continue her studies in music in the fall. Congratulations to this year's Westside School Theater Association Award winner, Sarah Lynch. Mr. Brent Shirello. Good morning, everyone. So uh, the first award I have the privilege to give out is the CSH Special Music Award. Uh, this is pr presented to three students in the music program who have consistently demonstrated enthusiasm and respect for their art form and whom their teachers have deemed as assets to their respective ensemble. These recipients are the heart of the ensemble in which they perform, and their leadership is what sustains the program and builds enthusiasm and a sense of community with our younger members. It is my pleasure to present these awards to Alexis Guicciarini, Isabella Malone, and Erin Gallagher.
right here in a bit. Okay. Uh, the next award that I will be handing out is the American Legion Post 360 Music Medal. This award is presented to a senior who has given outstanding service in the field of music. Since fourth grade, the student has been an integral part of the music program, performing with his fifth and sixth grade ensembles as a mere fourth grader, which is no easy task. And since coming to the junior senior high, they've been an invaluable member of many of our ensembles, from junior high foot orchestra to jazz band, and they have represented CSH as a member of all county several times, and continue to work hard as a senior in this most difficult of years for the arts. It is my pleasure to present this year's American Legion Post 360 Music Award to Kristen Samuel. Next award I'll be giving out is the Vivian Kahn Award. This award is presented to a student who is active in the performing arts. This year's recipient has been with me personally since third grade instrumental music. And that was when I began my career, almost as long ago as uh, Mr. Homer, not quite 73 years, but close, close. Um, their musicianship is not only recognized throughout the district, where they're a member of the Brass Ensemble, Symphony Orchestra, Pitt Orchestra, but also at the county level, where they've been chosen for all county ensembles. Whenever there's a situation they were not playing in, they could always be counted on to volunteer their time and help out. I'm thrilled to present this year's Vivian Kahn Award to Kaya Cohen. Oh, yes. Okay. And next, I will be presenting the NASA Miss Kane Leadership Award. Miss Kane is the New York State Council of Administrators for Music Education. And this award is given throughout the country, uh, throughout the state, rather. That would be why it's New York. And um, this award is presented to a member of a school performing ensemble who best represents the qualities of leadership within the music program. This year's recipient, from the time they were in fourth grade, could always be counted on to lend their performance skills to any number of performance situations. The student has truly been a role model and a leader, not only of their section, but of any ensemble they've been a part of in their time here. They have represented Coltsman Harbor at the county, island, and state levels pretty much every year since fifth grade. And they were also this year's symphony orchestra president. It is my pleasure to present the Nassau Miss Kane Leadership Award to Matthew Ross. And the final award that I'll be giving out today is actually on behalf of Ms. Oswald. Um, this award, uh, the, in 19, uh, I'm going to read what she wrote for you. In 1958, William H. Amaro was elected as the first president of the Cold Spring Harbor Central School District, where he served until 1965. As a prominent member of the CSH Board of Education, he was an advocate for the arts. This award honors a student whose passion for art continues the vision of Mr. Amaro. Uh, each year, this award is actually alternated between the art and music department. Uh, however, this year's recipient, in fact, excels in both the fine and performing arts, seeking to represent Cold Spring Harbor and bring their creative vision for both art and music well beyond the classroom. This student is the heart of both the music and fine art departments here, and on behalf of Ms. Oswald and myself, it is a distinct pleasure and honor to present this year's William H. Amaro Award to Isabella Ballon. And now I will give it back to Dr. Bowling. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chiarello. Our next award start with the Ted Hilton Scholarship. The Ted Hilton Scholarship goes to one boy and one girl from Westside School who maintained good grade, grade point averages and participated in a variety of extracurricular activities during their course of schooling here in Cold Spring Harbor. Two students selected this year for the Ted Hilton Scholarship are Alex Culver and Margot Insignia.
Our next award is the ALIVE Award. ALIVE stands for the Association of Long Island Vocational Educators. They are made up of a group of teachers and administrators from Western Suffolk Foses that have put together an award to honor the work of students within vocational enterprises. The recipient of Cold Spring Harbor's ALIVE Award for this year is Liam Golden. Julia Fairchild was a conservationist and community activist who was instrumental in shaping the Cold Spring Harbor waterfront that we know today. To honor her legacy, the Julia Fairchild Award for Community Spirit was created to recognize the student that demonstrates an outstanding constructive interest in the school and overall community. This year, the committee has selected a student who has lived up to these ideals, embodying the spirit of the award. It is our pleasure to present the Julia Fairchild Award to Erin Gallagher. The Joseph T. Wallace Scholarship was created to honor Joe's memory as a member of the Cold Spring Harbor class of 1980. In keeping with Joe's warmth and personality, this award goes to a student who is known for their easygoing nature, sense of humor, kind heart, and genuine concern for others, especially those who are less fortunate or struggling. This year, our honoree truly represents all of these qualities and more. It is great pleasure that we present the Joseph T. Wallace Scholarship to Ava Walking. Over 1.2 million students take the PSAT annually. From that group of students, National Merit Scholarship finalists must submit a rigorous application to become a finalist. Of that 1.2 million, only 15,000 students across the nation become National Merit finalists. We are lucky this year to have a finalist from Cold Spring Harbor. These students are eligible to receive college scholarships, which will be announced later this month. Please join me in congratulating our National Merit finalist, Matthew Ross. The Principal's Special Recognition Award is given for a variety of reasons. As the Principal, I get to make the criteria each year. For some, it is the way that they have held themselves in the hallways and how they have treated others. For some, it might be that they have overcome a personal challenge throughout the years. Still for others, it might be that they are the type of student that every teacher wants to have in their classroom, but that goes throughout their day with a humble and generous demeanor. Many of these students embody the qualities of rise up, respect, integrity, service, empathy, and being an upstander. For whatever the reason, I am proud to recognize these students for all of the ways that they have worked to distinguish themselves. There are nine this year, so bear with me. They're also in random order to keep some suspense. So with that, I'd like to bring up Brig Stella and Kristen Samuel. Andrew Melillo and Cole Longo.
Alexa Tacante and Taylor Schneider. And the final three, Sophia Keschner, Matthew Howell, and Amy Chin. At this point, I'd like to introduce Ms. Jody Waters for the next awards. for a student who enjoys the respect and friendship of peers and faculty, displays honesty and integrity in academics, friendships, and sports, and is a true and loyal friend and active volunteer in community activities, much like Drew himself. This year's recipient is described in almost exactly these terms by his teachers and peers. Many simply spoke of him as fantastic. And others said everything about him is genuine, his desire to learn, his intellectual pursuits, his helpful nature, and his concern for others. Arnie Lem, it is a pleasure that I present the Drew Kleinek Recognition Award. End to Intolerance Award began years ago and is linked with our work in Holocaust and Genocide Studies and has grown to include social justice and activism and the belief that when we know better, we do better. The individuals being recognized today embody the ideals behind this award. Both the recipients are university, universally empathetic, conscientious, and thoughtful about the world in which we live both locally and globally. One of my favorite descriptors used for one recipient is that he is the first in the room and will sit in the front row seat, and the other was described as a humble and steady participant who models positivity through his actions. These students know best and do best. Matthew Ross and Matthew Wright, please come up for an empty college. today is in recognition of a former student who was a team player, and that matches our recipient today. This student is a quiet leader and, as one of her teachers shared, a good soul. She has a maturity to her that often belies her years and a sense of responsibility that is noteworthy. In recognition of her diligence and polite attitude, I invite Christina Alaskevich to accept the Ellen Tricartan recognition. Our next presenter is Ms. Kim Libertini. The Don Monte Memorial Research Foundation is dedicated to cancer research, education, fellowship, and patient care in the Long Island Tri-State area. Each year, they offer a scholarship to a student that is pursuing a career in the science field. If you attended last night's Science Research Symposium, you would see that it's most appropriate that this year's recipient of the Don Monte Memorial Research Foundation Scholarship goes to John Ray Martin.
The American Chemical Society works to promote the advancement of chemistry and foster careers in science. Each year, they recognize high school students that have demonstrated outstanding academic achievement in the field of chemistry. This year's recipient of the American Chemical Society Award goes to Gabriella Harrison. to a student that has the ability to see a gadget and deconstruct the parts to gain an understanding for its function and reconstruct a gadget to improve its function. It's the student that manages projects because they have the vision to recognize all the components necessary to complete the work. This year, the B&G Scholarship Award goes to Tommy Day. Suffolk Science Teachers Association honors students that have demonstrated a commitment to science and earned outstanding achievement. This year, the Suffolk Science Teachers Award goes to Izzy Ailer. This year's Cold Spring Harbor Theater Dramatic Arts Award goes to someone whose talents have been showcased throughout her career at the junior senior high school. She is co-president of the Cold Spring Harbor's chapter of the International Thespian Society, president of the Drama Club. She has played leading, supporting, and ensemble roles in plays, musicals, and reviews over the last six years, is an all-state vocalist, and has also volunteered to paint sets in her free periods, always helping herself with professionalism, grace, and a strong work ethic. She is a constant role model to her peers. We're very excited to see her continue to flourish in the arts and entertainment industries when she leaves us next year. This year's Cold Spring Harbor Theater Dramatic Arts Award goes to Jessica McCoy. This year's Catherine Maloney Award for a lead in theatrical productions goes to someone who is no stranger to Cold Spring Harbor stage. The year after year, he surpasses expectations and impresses his teachers, peers, and audiences with his full commitment to whatever character he is playing. He's played lead and supporting roles in plays and musicals in every year of his high school career, and he has won several awards from the town of Huntington's Hunting Tony Awards for Best Male, male Vocalist as a freshman, Best Supporting Actor as a sophomore, and just last month was named Best Actor and Best Vocalist. He has played in the band, operated spotlights for productions he is not performing in, and is in our chamber singers a cappella group. I look forward to hearing about his con continued success during his studies next year. This year's Catherine Maloney Theater Lead Award goes to Augustine Mayerine. This year's Catherine Maloney Award for a supporting performer goes to someone who has epitomized what it means to be an ensemble member. She has been in plays and musicals every year and puts her all into every role she is given. She is the other co-president of our International Thespian Society chapter, vice president of the Drama Club, and a member of our chamber singers. She is humble and kind and endlessly supportive to her peers. This year's Catherine Maloney Theater Supporting Role Award goes to Catherine McGee. This year's Lloyd Harbor Theater Arts Award has been awardee has been an active member of performing arts since her time in Cold Spring Harbor. She has been a featured dancer and ensemble member in her annual musicals and is in the high school orchestra. She is always a friendly face in the halls to her teachers and to her peers. Congratulations to Bianca Kelly, this year's Lloyd Harbor School Theater Award.
Our next award is the New York Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance Outstanding Student Award. It's given to two seniors, one male and one female, who meet the qualifications of being exceptional uh, in physical performance, scholastic ability, leadership qualities, and outstanding service in the area of physical education. I think also genetics has something to do with this, as the award goes to Anna Spare and Will Spare. <laughs> Our next award goes to a, a male and female student who demonstrate outstanding interest and achievement in the area of physical education. The Donald V. Greco Physical Education Award this year goes to Zane Awan and Kaya Cohen. The Anna Madison Woods Award goes to a male and female student who demonstrate good sportsmanship and meet the challenges of daily life with courage, resolution, and an outstanding concern for the rights of others. This year, the Anna Madison Wood Awards go to Susanna Oster and Daniel Denazi. Our next award is the Brianna Titcomb Memorial Award. Brianna was known for the example she set in unselfish play and team camaraderie. The past recipients of, of this award have been selected for their pursuit of excellence in life through learning, sport, and team spirit. This year's winner is no different. The Brianna Titcomb Memorial Award goes to Ann Craft. Our next award is the Bill Foxen Gift of Gab Scholarship. Bill Foxen was a member of the second graduating class from Cold Spring Harbor in 1965. His warmth was seen in his interactions with his family and friends. This award goes to a student who demonstrates strong work ethic, community involvement, and who demonstrates excellence in communication. This year's Bill Foxen Award goes to Luca Johnson. This time I'd like to call up Mr. Robert C. Fenter, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Dr. Bolin. Uh, before I present the awards, I would just like to thank Dr. Bolin, Ms. McCloskey, the entire team and staff here for putting together this wonderful award ceremony, as well as to uh, Mr. Monastero and our support staff for delivering water to us this morning. It's a new thing for us. Being outside, so let's give them a round of applause and thank uh, This morning I present the Suzanne Kleinecht Award. Ms. Kleinecht served as a school board member in our community for 15 years. Ms. Kleinecht has been admired for her traits of strong moral character, resilience, generosity, service to the community, and a wonderful sense of humor. This award goes to a student who reflects all of these traits. The recipient this year is Walter Gummersall. Peter Harrison Memorial Award 
is given in honor of Peter Harris, Harrison, who is a student known for his love of basketball and a laugh that was contagious. As one of, the, of eight children, Peter spent his life learning from his siblings, who played the game before him and teaching the ones who came after him. As a 1,000 career point scorer and a member of the Coldstream Harbor Hall of Fame, Peter's sudden death at age, 18, at age 19 left a void that has always been filled by the sound of him either bouncing the ball or the buzz of his entertaining banter. This year, the Peter Harrison Memorial Award goes to James Rampey. Next, the Peter Federoff Award. Peter Federoff served as a board member for 22 years. He saw two generations of students flourish in our schools under his stewardship. It is fitting that an award in his name would go to a student who recognizes honesty, hard work, and integrity in both academic and athletic endeavors. This year, the Peter Federoff Award goes to Will Spare. Next, it's my honor to present the Morton Tannenbaum, Tannenbaum Award. Mr. Morton Tannenbaum, a Laurel Hollow resident, served on the Cold Spring Harbor Board for 20 years, including several terms as president. His children, Susan, Nancy, Steve, and Richard, attended Westside School and later Cold Spring Harbor High School. His success as a businessman was underscored by the size of his heart and his desire to help all learners. Mr. Tenenbaum served our Board of Education for nearly 20 years, and this year, the recipient of the Morton Tenenbaum Award is Roman Taglieri. Next, it's my honor to present the Scope Scholarship Award. The Scope Scholarship Award from Scope Educational Services, which is a nonprofit provider of quality programs for children, parents, community members, and professional educators of the Long Island School Districts. The recipient is that graduating student who exemplifies the heart and soul of their school, whether on the stage, the athletic field, or the classroom. The student has made the most of every day that she has spent on this campus, and therefore this award goes to Anna Stair. Next award is the SCSSA Scholarship Award, and it is my pleasure to present the $500 scholarship on behalf of the Suffolk County School Superintendents Association. This year, every high school in Suffolk County has had the opportunity to award a scholarship, and this scholarship program has been established to promote and enhance the development of those graduates who will pursue a career that will contribute to a field of education, social services, or another meaningful pursuit. The student uh, recognized this morning for the SCSSA scholarship is Benjamin Bruno. It's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Erin O'Shan to present the next award. Hi, seniors. Congratulations on all you've accomplished over the last six years. You should be very proud of yourselves. Today I'm here to present the Victoria Terenzi Scholarship. 
Many of you probably never met Mrs. Transy. In fact, you were in seventh grade when she taught her last class here at Cold Spring Harbor. So let me tell you a little bit about my friend, Vicki Transy. She lived here in Cold Spring Harbor. Both of her children went to school here. She was an avid runner. She loved her animals, including her horses, which she kept up at Comset and she could be found there riding most afternoons after school. She loved to hike and go to the beach, basically anything in nature. She grew up in both LA and New York City. And most importantly, she loved to teach. Teaching was a passion of hers since she was a little girl. In fact, her five siblings tell very funny stories about how she used to force them to sit in desks so that she could teach them when they were all little kids. To Vicki, teaching wasn't a job, it was a joy. She taught everything from eighth grade social studies to AP psychology and AP world history. She firmly believed in not only delivering the content of various social studies subjects, but she believed it was her job to turn often impulsive, always emotional eighth graders into well-rounded human beings. This continued in her high school courses as well. To reinforce this, she gave tickets out in class when students displayed what she referred to as Terenzi points. A student could earn points when they displayed one or more of the following qualities. Diligence, attentiveness, perseverance, inquisitiveness, thoughtfulness, responsibility, patience, and helpfulness. Vicki passed away five years ago during the summer of 2016 after a long, brave battle with breast cancer. Ever since, the social studies department has done a fantastic job in choosing one boy and one girl they feel best exemplified the traits that Vicki felt were so important to instill in each and every one of her students. This year's re uh, recipients fully represent the Terenzi Point qualities, so it is my utmost pleasure to present Sean McCauley, and Martina Simone with the Victoria Terenzi Center. Our next award is the Appliance World Community Service Scholarship. This award is for a student who has demonstrated outstanding service to others at the local, state, national, or international level. Students have to write an essay in order to be a recipient of this award. And this year, the Appliance World Community Service Scholarship goes to Amal Siddiqui. This award is the, uh, it's a new award this year from the Education of the Cold Spring Harbor Educational Foundation, the Educational Foundation Scholarship. Based on moral character, innovation, creative thinking, and a critical reasoner, this award goes to students who seek challenge by taking the most rigorous classes for them and who sought ways to impact their own educational experiences during their time in Cold Spring Harbor. It's for that student who's inquisitive and continually pushes in the classroom. The kind of student that every teacher would like to have in front of them. This year, the Educational Foundation Scholarships go to Benjamin Bruno and Ella Matarosio. Our next set of awards is from the Lloyd Harbor Parent Teacher Group. These awards, similar to those from Lloyd Harbor School, are for particular areas of um, uh, discipline where students have excelled for their time. So for art, the Lloyd Harbor PTG Award goes to Lily O'Donnell. In English and in math, Paul Bianco. In French, Vlad Tarashansky. In 
in health, Liam Golding and Emma Solis. In the area of music, Matthew LaCapra. For outstanding service, Ryan Riley. In science, Julianne Massa. In social studies, Augustine Mayorino. And in Spanish, John Ray Martin. This time I'd like to call up Ms. Tassani, who will present our next two awards. The American Association of Teachers of French Outstanding Senior Award is given to that senior who has demonstrated exceptional commitment, passion, and scholarship in the study of French. This year, that exceptional student has taken French for six years, is a member of the French National Honor Society the French and the French Club, and has received high honors on the Grand Concours exam several times. She leads by example in and out of the French classroom, Isabel Edelhart. The American Association of Teachers of Spanish Outstanding Senior Award is given to that senior who has demonstrated exceptional commitment, passion, and scholarship in the study of Spanish. This motivated student took the AP Spanish and Italian exam as a junior, and according to Senor Fisensky, is an unassuming language learner who absorbs everything. She is an inspiration to all who know her. Martina Simone. Good morning. The faculty remember Bailey Ginsberg as an awesome kid who had an infectious enthusiasm for every aspect of life. She was always in the English office, bringing joy and appreciation of the world. She found something to celebrate every day of her life. And as a result, the whole school knew her and loved her. This year's recipient of the Bailey Ginsburg Award is a young man who embodies Bailey's enthusiasm and joy. He is a one-man celebration of the best our school has to offer. This year's Bailey Ginsburg Award goes to Liam Golden. And the last award today is presented to a student who demonstrates an enthusiastic concern for ideas and for education in its deepest sense. This is the perfect description for today's recipient. Some of the adjectives his teachers use to describe him are driven, goal-oriented, ethical. His English teachers, Ms. April Henry and Mr. Josh Bobber, report that he has the highest of standards and will do whatever it takes to meet these standards. He's humble, reserved, and appreciative. 
I mostly know today's recipient, Andrew Kamen, to the debate team. So I asked his head coach, Dr. Michael Andrews, to write a few words about him. He sent me three pages, single spaced. I won't share the whole thing, but here are some highlights. Andrew is a born organizer, a proactive researcher in debate, and a deep thinker. Andrew serves as head captain of the entire debate team and has even helped to teach the elective tournament debate classes by offering helpful clarifications, insight, historical comparisons, evidence cards, and modeling. Andrew shows particular skill in Lincoln Douglas debate, in which he has qualified for the New York State Championship every single year, consistently earning high rankings. This year, he was a quarter finalist at States in the varsity level Lincoln Douglas debate. And last weekend, he represented Cold Spring Harbor in the 2021 Grand National Tournament. My colleagues, Ms. Allison Halloran, Mr. Vincent Natale, Mr. Anthony Petka, all remarked that Andrew is truly an outstanding and uniquely talented student who is a pleasure to have in class. Andrew is also well liked by his peers as he is humble, polite, and courteous. He loves competition and does not know the word senioritis in either his classes or his activities. It is my honor to present this year's Sean Kelly Award to Andrew Kane. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for coming out this morning to enjoy our senior award assembly. At this point, I would love for you to all give our, our students assembled here a wonderful round of applause for all of us. on a tremendous amount of work to decide these award recipients year after year, meeting early in the mornings um, for multiple weeks at a time uh, to come up with this. So uh, to the teachers, I'd like to thank you for your hard work and effort on everything you've done this year to put that together. So thank you. And at this point, thank you all so much for coming. Please, as you exit out to the parking lot, try not to get in a group and keep yourselves separated. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you on the 13th at graduation. Yeah, yeah, how's your life? Yeah, I'm 